right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from well, a bit of a misty San Diego today, but I'm delighted to be joined all the way from Zurich in Switzerland by Justin Michael. How are you doing, Justin? Life is good. I can't complain. I got my black sheep hat on and I'm ready to rock. Exactly. And Justin is world record-breaking outbound sales maven who arguably hit built the deepest client acquisition methodology of all time, the Justin Michael method. <laughs> it's driven over 1 billion in pipeline uh, for over 2000 plus uh, startups. Uh, you've also, uh, you're also a global authority on AI based, uh, based outbound prospect, uh, prospecting. You worked along people like Aaron Rosh, Josh Braun, Mark Roberge. And, and today what we're gonna talk about is you have this, you have this very fascinating uh, trilogy that you have released, uh, Michael. So I wonder if you could give us, just start off by giving us the genesis of where this trilogy came from and why it's a trilogy. Yeah, I guess that makes me a trilogist, which would there give me go. something in common with J.R.R. Tolkien or C.S. Lewis <laughs> or <laughs> some of my true heroes. But um, so about four years ago, I released a book called Tech Powered Sales around the mm -hmm. time that I started in consulting. I've been doing sales since 21 and I'm 44. And my mentor is Tony J. Hughes down in Australia who wrote mm -hmm. the Joshua Principle. And I was the case study of combo prospecting. So around 2020, Steve Richard mentioned that there wasn't a book published with full sequences and cadences anywhere on Amazon, an officially published book. So we got a deal with HarperCollins and we put that out and it was called Tech Powered Sales. Well, what happened is we went into the kind of corona and recession and everyone said, hey, we need to cut back the tech stacks. There was suddenly right. 10,000 tools to do this. So I realized that I needed to put out a power user manual for reps of all shapes and sizes. There's 11 million selling tech. There's 400 million small businesses. If they don't have a thousand or 2000 or 5,000 a month to get all the tech stacks automation in AI. Mm -hmm. So these books are short uh, power user manuals, uh, just Michael method one, two, and three. The first book is called sales superpowers. And that's really all top funnel and outbound. The second book is full cycle. And the third book uh, which is called Justin Michael Method 2.0. And the third book, Attraction Selling, is really all about the mindset and uh, law of attraction meets sales. And so I got a third publisher, an indie publisher uh, out of Arizona. His name is Jeremy Jones, and he's had like 200 Amazon bestsellers. And we put these three out, and uh, we've just been selling them like candy. It's been really awesome. They have almost 500 reviews on them, and they're all in the top 25, and I couldn't be happier. Yeah, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about let's let's go to the the most recent book, uh, the third one, the attraction selling, um, mm -hmm. because I think this because I think this is so relevant for today, uh, you know, mindset and way you approach things because we live in this in this strange world of constant distraction of feeling like we're busier than we've ever been in our lives, and I think we're just more distracted. And and we're and we're often disconnected, and we're looking for shortcuts, and we're bombarded with all of this. So, just talk to me a little bit about how you started to um, marry up the law of attraction with sales. Yeah. So in 2006, I actually had dinner with Jack Canfield, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. So mm -hmm. all of you that saw the Secret DVD, he was in that, and he actually gave me the Secret DVD within about six weeks. I met Rhonda Byrne, who created that documentary. She recommended the book that it was based on called The Science of Getting Rich of 1910 by Wallace Waddles. I read that book over a thousand times. And then as I started getting really serious about tech sales in my late 20s and early 30s, I moved up to San Francisco when I, I think I was making like 45K and I got a job offer after a three month search for 45K. Mm -hmm. I created a process called Music uh, Manifestation, Musification really a visualization and affirmation uh, process set to self frequencies, 432 hertz, 528 hertz, and have special properties to calm your brain down, move it from a beta to theta states you can kind of auto-suggest. Many of you may be familiar with a book called Psycho-Cybernetics, Maxwell and Maltz. It was a big hit, sold a lot of copies. But what I found over the last um, 15 years is nobody... <laughs> <laughs> with a with expertise in strategic sales, like 10 or 20 years of experience and expertise in metaphysics had written a manual for how a seller can reprogram their subconscious mind, for how mm -hmm. a seller can visualize the outcome of the deal. 
athletes do this formula one drivers visualize the turn the turns and it's so fundamental because 95 percent of your earning potential is really your inner psychology and your subconscious mind it's yeah. very obvious from a thinking perspective if you're thinking gosh i don't think i can close the deal i, I can't talk to the sea level if you're doubting it you're obviously that's going to reflect in your tonality and your action so that's just the obvious piece but on a metaphysical level, we're programming our supercomputer of our subconscious mind. And we really have to change around our mindset if we want to reach some of those higher earning tiers. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty stunning realization. Yeah. And and I think and, and what I like about this is you're starting to look at the inputs, right? Because sometimes we're we you, you know, you start off your day and you don't consciously think about like, what am I feeding my brain first thing in the morning when I get up? What am I feeding? you know, my brain all day long? Am I feeding it junk? Am I feeding it, uh, you know, new, provocative news? Am I getting worked up over something on, on social media? I mean, taking control of the inputs, I think is very, very important. It's true. So I've seen a couple different studies. So I'm definitely like a neuroscience wonk at this point. We have something on the order of 75,000 thoughts per day. I think mm -hmm. we're aware of 7,000 of them. 95% uh, are repetitive to yesterday and 80% are negative. And that's if you're Michael Jordan or a billionaire, mm -hmm. all of us. However, we're not our thoughts and we're not our mind and we're not our body. So what are we? We are the consciousness behind it. Uh, you know, and so when you have a negative thought, it's just not true. And so you can look at a negative thought and try to stop it and try to control it, or you can embrace it and welcome it and think the opposite. So if you think, hey, I'm not worthy enough for that, that role, you can say, I am worthy for that role. Or, I can't really close a seven figure deal. I can close. And you can flip around. And I, I got this process out of 50 Cent, the rapper. He, he took nine shots to the face and lived. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, like, if you live through that, you're kind of going, life is a miracle. Yeah. Right. So the fundamental is we live in a benevolent universe and it's readily apparent in nature. Look at the Great Barrier Reef and coral and all the fish and all the rainforest and how abundant everything is look at children as they crawl and walk and run and jump it doesn't make sense the human gets to be you know 25 year olds years old and says oh, i can only make 50k or now i've made 200k that's the maximum ceiling there's no ceiling yeah. it's exponential it's really abundant so you got to see the miracle and there's this process in the books called pronoia well it's a theme it's like the universe is plotting to do me good and like harmonizing with that positivity and intention is really powerful yeah, because that's such a different uh, approach than probably the one that we're more hardwired as humans or we've learned behavior where we just think the world is out to get us all the time and that everything that happens to us is personal. Uh, so um, part of this is, uh, I think, is looking at the world as as abundant as opposed to limited. And I think that's often where that undoes some salespeople is because they think they're fighting for a limited pie and if they don't grab this bit then i mean somebody else got it then it's less for them instead of looking at the world as as abundance that there's enough for everyone if you go find, if you just go look for it yeah i i agree with you on that i mean i came up like in playing jazz and uh had tough teachers you know and anyone who's been in sports you get that tough coach who's like you know that david goggins style just hard on you you know and then your inner voice is like cam and sales like make the call it's like da vinci code you're just like mm -hmm. lashing yourself that wasn't good enough and you can grow to an extent like that but ultimately if your internal world is chaos and self-abuse what's appearing outwardly is not going to work it, you know the law of attraction is the law of love so you really have to mm -hmm. be gentle yourself and love yourself now the things that are missing generally in the law of attraction one the word action is in attraction mm -hmm. you can't just sit around daydreaming number two is i think um giving and service i talk about it so much in the three books service-based prospecting right tony alessandra called this the platinum rule not just the golden rule what you'd right. like to do to others what you'd like but what they'd like you know so putting yourself in their shoes and even on the first call being consultative and delivering a ton of value to the point where they would pay you 500 dollars because they learned so much just sitting with you and you've prepared and you've really uh you've really brought something special to them mm -hmm. i mean i do coaching so that's essentially the whole secret. Um, I read The Go-Giver. I'm in touch with Bob Berg. Ian Koniak recommended it. So th that's a lot of what mm -hmm. this is. I mean, I talked with Rondo who wrote The Secret. I mean, that thing, I think it made like 300 million. It got into 50 languages. Mm -hmm. She's the big thing is she used to like walk down the streets in Australia, empty the ATM and just give out bills like with tears on her eyes, just giving. Mm 
because yeah. that creates receiving, right? It creates that polarity, the duality of the universe. So I have a bunch of processes in this book in the first chapter of ways to calm your mind, get it into a su suggestive state, either before you sleep or when you wake up, when it's in a theta state, and how to just start, you know, pumping yourself with, with medicine, <laughs> mm -hmm. self-suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. By the way, it's interesting what you said there about because some people people sometimes don't believe this concept that if you provide enough or if you provided enough value in a sales interaction that, you know, you could literally charge somebody for that. Right. That there's enough value. And I, I worked, uh, you know, I ran Hothwaite Spin Selling for a number of years and I uh, I spent a lot of time with Neil Rackham and that was Neil Rackham who wrote Spin Selling. That was always his thing that you know you should provide enough value that they'd write you a check for the call and i always thought that's a nice concept i love it and everything but i'd love to see it in in reality so he and i went on a sales i'll just cut this short but he went on a sales call one time neil and i um with a with a very very well-known uh, company in the us we met with the ceo and the, the sales marketing team who were all dysfunctional and we we spent an hour and a half with them. And at the end of the hour and a half, the, the CEO was so delighted with everything that I thought, this is my opportunity. And I said, if I sent you an invoice for this meeting, I'm not for, not for anything else we discussed, just an <laughs> invoice for this meeting, would you pay it? And he said, you know, I would. <laughs> I love that story. I, I love Neil. I've, I've never yeah. directly talked with Neil, but I know Tony Hughes, my mentor. Has, yeah. So I absolutely love spin selling, huge mm -hmm. influence. Um, I do it in reverse. Like I just pretend like, you know, John Golden already transferred me 500 bucks mm -hmm. and here I am. So how, how can I help you? So yeah. I give away all the secrets. Like Alex Ramosi says, give away the secrets, sell the implementation. Yeah. Once they start reading a book that's very deep subject matter expertise, like, wow, this, you know, this person really knows this is a real expert. And now yeah. uh, there's a lot to this. Maybe you can come in and help us implement it, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so tell me a little bit more about, uh, because mindset has been thrown around a lot at the moment, you know, and, and, it, and it always sounds like so simple. It's just like, you know, oh, you know, get them, get your mindset right. Um, but people still struggle with what's the first step in getting my mindset right? Because I think pe people are paralyzed sometimes because it just seems like it's, it seems a little, eh, it seems a little, you know, untenable in some ways that I can just change my mindset. But so how, how do you help people do that? Yeah. So you don't attract based on your mood, your mood goes up and down. And mm -hmm. if it was all about your mood, you know, there's plenty of people who are unsavory characters and very rich. So <laughs> <laughs> um, the big thing is you attract what you are and your identity and what you decide about yourself. So the big thing is if you've decided I'm a 50 K earner, you're not going to do 400 K. And that's why lottery winners, 70% of them just go bankrupt and lose the money mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a state of mind. So my, um, mine is twofold. One, gratitude, being very grateful for the blessings you have and where you are, but then being grateful for what is yet to come to you and having mm. faith in a higher power that it's coming. So it's not just about being positive all the time in a fake way, but it's knowing that the universe is, is going to provide. So you know what you want, why you want it, and you leave the house up to the domain of the universe. So you literally have to visualize everything in your life or in a sales situation as if it's already happened. And that's just like the athlete winning the race, running through, uh, you know, the finish line. And, you know, that it, it's seeing the deal done. It's yeah. seeing the customer happy, the value there. Maybe some of it's you winning the ladder, President's Club. Maybe it's a financial condition, feeling that, being emotional about it, being grateful for it. But closing your eyes, listening to the special music, and then seeing it is already happening. And your your brain doesn't know the difference between, you know, <laughs> reality and imagination. That's why Einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge. What happens then is people start to visualize the future state and they feel like it's so far away and then they feel kind of ungrateful or bad about where they are. And that's why those I am statements are so fundamental. Um, I remember Jack Canfield taught me when I'm a genius and I apply my wisdom and at 26 years old, you know, I was driving around in a Corolla not much to my name thinking like, I'm not much of a genius. <laughs> I had a lot of self limiting beliefs. I'm not knocking the car. It's a, it's a yeah. great one. But what I'm saying is that you kind of have to believe in things unseen and knowing that that future will come to you. And that's the part of the book that really becomes metaphysical and about quantum mechanics. And, and that's a little hard to grasp, but I think you read it 
I slice it in like a dozen different ways. <laughs> yeah, excellent. No, it's it's funny what you say though about uh, how how our mind works, and because uh, uh, one company we were building um, simulations at one stage, and we did a lot of research into the science behind it, and actually your memory you you'll recall a simulation as a real event you don't dis your 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 mind doesn't distinguish between oh that was a simulation that wasn't real when you you recall it as a real event and to your point is is you know you can program your mind and your mind can like you you know as you start your belief journey and believing in the future and stuff it can manifest because that's how powerful your mind is yeah, they call it the reticular activating system, uh, RAS, the RAS. I mean, mm -hmm. your brain is firing like <laughs> billions of, of neurons. It's so it's so far beyond our comprehension of what we're even aware of. Mm -hmm. It's pretty stunning when you realize your exact financial condition, like 95% of that is subconscious, and a lot of it is formed before the age of seven. So mm -hmm. I'm obviously an advocate of psychotherapy, but... Um, really it's these processes of changing around your attitude and taking the time to meditate, to say affirmations, to visualize, to be grateful, and just to tap into, you know, sort of a fourth dimensional spiritual energy and power. If you think of quantum physics, and my grandfather was a nuclear physicist in a collider, like a CERN particle physics. Um, there's one in, in Long Island, actually, uh, in a town called Brookhaven. People don't know about it. It's not like a secret. Mm -hmm. But basically, there's the observer effect down at the subatomic level that the perspective of the scientist viewing the subatomic particle moves the particle. That's pretty insane. Then there's quantum entanglement, where if you take a cell, a human cell, and cut it in half and put half of it in Tokyo and half of California and send different energy waves or emotions at, at the cell, it affects the other cell, mm -hmm. <laughs> the other side of the world. So we're all kind of connected through 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 space in in mm -hmm. this really odd way so you know we're all these toroidal energy fields and we radiate out about six feet so if, if we change our, our mentality and we send out a different vibration we attract something different back and so it's kind of like you're tapping into these different multiverses so you know the way neville goddard put it was living in the feeling of the wish fulfilled uh wayne dyer actually wrote a book on that and that's what you have to do. I mean, that's what I did. I got to San Francisco and I visualized getting this dream role and everyone rejected me because I didn't have a college degree. Well, then mm -hmm. I ended up working for Sean Parker, the world's youngest billionaire, getting an instant offer for over 100K and then going on to Salesforce and LinkedIn and 13 startups. And over the last four years, I've built up to being one of the top five people in the world doing sales coaching and training in B2B. I'm right up there with Scott Lees and Aaron Ross and Josh Braun and Ian Koniak. So, you know, I've been able to do in three, four years what others have taken 13 or 15 years to do. And I think it's because I, I know I'm unstoppable and I've decided on the identity that I'm going to be world class at this. I read all the Sandler stuff and I was inspired to say, well, who's going to be the David Sandler of the top funnel? That right. sounds interesting. Let's, mm -hmm. <laughs> how rigorous would that be? And so I, I took a crack at it. Yeah. And a lot of what you're a lot of what you're talking about, too, is, I mean, there's so much um, intentionality and consciousness in what you're doing. Um, but you are also you're making the conscious decision to make that quiet time to, you know, make that time for meditation, make that time for reflection, make that time for visualization. And I think that is one of the one of the the things that people find the hardest right now, because they've allowed themselves to get caught up in this distraction world that we live in and they feel that well i don't have time for this but in reality if you did a time and motion study the old-fashioned one and went around with a clipboard behind somebody you'd find that an awful lot of their day is wasted on nonsense right let's be honest all of us are guilty of that so i think that's probably a starting point is to start looking at like how are you actually investing your time Time is like the z-axis. It's illusory in a way, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's the same amount of effort to attract five dollars as five million. I'll say this: like over the last twenty years, I worked the hardest. I was like the Will Smith on the treadmill. Like, <laughs> you get on the other treadmill, you're you're gonna die on there because I'm never gonna get off. Right? That quote. First, first in, last to leave. These days, I, I meditate. I nap. I I go to the beach and put my feet in the sand. I walk in the water. Um, while I'm prospecting, I'll put on different solfeggio frequencies on YouTube, on Spotify, 432 hertz, 528 hertz, like the miracle tone, DNA healing. I'm conscious of just my point of attraction and my chronic 
life state, how I feel to kind of reset. And I do these processes. And when the negative thoughts come in or self-limiting beliefs, I can see that as separate to myself because, you know, inside of us all, there's only love. There's only positivity. You can't use these laws to like Darth Vader style, like wish evil on people, right? It just, this stuff's all really creative and positive. So that's the, that's the key. When you decouple yourself and realize that like only you are limiting yourself, that's the baby elephant, you know, it's little and it goes around, it's chained mm -hmm. to the stake. And now it's like, you know, it weighs tons and it, it could just break the chain, but it doesn't. Right. And I learned this in coaching because I was such a tactician, you know, Miller, Hyman, Challenger, Sandler, Taz, Battle Plan, Force, all of them. And I go and I work with a person and I give them the most amazing tactics for outbound. You can never imagine they jump for a while. And there's this expression, you can never get enough of what you don't need. And then it's mm -hmm. called the upper limiting, uh, upper limit problem. Uh, Gay Hendricks coined this. You then sabotage yourself to bring yep. yourself back down. So somebody has to change your identity and decide to receive that level of earnings and that's who they are mm -hmm. you know I, I remember my uh wife got me a really nice watch and i was just i was actually bent out of shape about it because i was you know i had never spent that amount of money on a watch ever in my life and it was like so uncomfortable mm -hmm. and in time over the years it's kind of a, a much more insignificant sum right right but that's just a perspective shift um it does mm -hmm. not have to be a materialistic element yeah, because as you mentioned, as you mentioned earlier, I mean, a lot of this stuff comes, uh, you know, comes out of our of, of our past, uh, you know, out of our experiences out of. And if you have, an, as you said, I mean, you know, that sounded like a, a really expensive watch, never seen that, never had something that expensive or whatever, and it makes you feel uncomfortable. And a lot of us do, because we come from those backgrounds where that you know, that watch could have been, you know, my dad's salary for the year. I don't know, you know, but you know, that kind of thing. And those are the kind of things you have to sort of set aside as those, you know, those are not, those don't define my future. Yeah. I mean, it just depends on what you, what level of, of wealth or success or abundance you want to create. You know, some people it's a level of fitness or a romantic mm -hmm. partner, um, freedom from stress that was certain trauma. So they want to turn around. I mean, I had a client who had a brain trauma from literally getting in a car accident. He had ADHD, um, sort of phenomena happening and he was using the frequencies to be able to relax his mind so he could focus and study. So uh, there's a lot happening with sound and frequencies and light and breathing and the chakras and it's ancient technologies, thousands and thousands of years old. But I think that's where we're going to, we're going to find this holistic seller, right? That's focused on giving and service to mm -hmm. the end client is, uh, taking care of their own mental and spiritual health mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, really working toward well-intended and win-win outcomes. It's a mm -hmm. brutal job doing outbound, but oh, you yeah. can kind of fall in love with it because in a way, if you have empathy and compassion, if someone treats you poorly on a cold call and rejects you, you could take it personally, but you could also say, hey, that's a fellow human just having a really hard day. Yeah. And it will just bounce right off of you coming from a different place of being. So I'm huge on this idea of like being, thinking and doing in concentric shells. Mm -hmm. And I'm helping people shift their identity, which changes their results in all of their areas. Yeah, I mean, I think what you just said there, I think it's a, it's a really important thing, too, is that whole empathy and that looking at the other person as a person and that changes the dynamic a lot because even the fact you know we say oh you know we're 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 cold calling a prospect yeah you know, well that prospect's a person and that prospect you know that person has all whatever they have going on in their lives so i, I do think that that's a really important point to 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 bear in mind that if you can be empathetic like that and you can flip that on its head as opposed to taking it personally you're going to be in a better space anyway and you're going to send out better vibrations right it's totally true so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited about this book series and taken all together. It's probably a three hour read. You can kind of read them backwards, like read the read the mindset piece, book three and then book one and two. And it's my life's work. You know, it's it's 23 years of, of my advice. And during the writing, I, I had about 200 coaching sessions and had a couple editors in the UK. I had technical editors, their chat GPT stuff. Uh, ideas on using LLMs and open AI. So it's it's very comprehensive as far as a system. And uh, you have been getting some rave reviews. Mainly people are just getting amazing results. Yeah.
Um, and uh, and and yeah, just give give me a couple of just give me a couple of highlights from the first two books. So, um, book one, I finally released this thing called the fourth frame, which is my social selling methodology, which is the actual chat DM. I call it chat and grow rich. How do I bump into you on LinkedIn? What do I say for the first message? How do I go back and forth in a formula or framework to flip the polarity so you want to meet on Zoom with me? So mm -hmm. I get into my cold call openers, objection handling, emails, email sequencing, clusters, narrative arcs, getting into social selling, visual prospecting, video prospecting, and all those tactics. A little bit of mindset. Second book is full cycle. So presentation, demos, qualification, seven-figure mindset, discoveries, kind of like the full cycle AE world. So kind of go from SDR world to AE world. Um, and so, yeah, the three together, I mean, you really ha have everything I wish I could tell myself uh, in 2001, because <laughs> I, <wanted to laughs> 21, I didn't yeah. read a sales book till I was uh, 31, till I, it was Jill Conrad, Snap Selling was the first one. She was uh -huh. gracious, reached out. She's cool. Yeah, no, and that just, uh, that just shows you that, um, I mean, there's, there's never, there's never a, a right or wrong time to start on something. So, I mean, it doesn't matter where you are in your career right now, where you are in your life right now, you can always, you can always uh, start something. And uh, this, this seems like a really good place to start. This is, as you said, these are, these are short, very readable. You've, you've, you've put a lot of complex information into, into very digestible format here, which is quite, which is quite incredible. If you had one piece of advice for a salesperson in, you know, right now, maybe a salesperson who's struggling a little bit, maybe they've lost confidence, maybe they're they're on a they're on a bad run, but unfortunately when you get on a bad run, the bad run tends to get worse because you start to expect it to get worse and it does, you know, it 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 tends to deliver for you if you're not careful. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is to, you know, understand that the best is yet to come and that your authentic true self is the solution there's really no tactics or methods or emulation it's the more you can just be comfortable with being who you truly are and uh you being bold and uh getting in front of people i mean trusted advisors trust mm -hmm. and advice so you know go easy on yourself love yourself get some sleep relax you can probably get farther ahead by just getting a good night of sleep taking care of <laughs> your diet getting your mind straight and then coming back at it uh, make a change geographically, branch into a new industry, take a risk. Like the, the, the piece of advice is from Joseph Campbell. I'll say, you know, the cave you fear to enter contains the treasure that you seek. And mm -hmm. most people I coach, they know what they need to do. That cave is just sitting there and they're looking at the cave and they're afraid of it. So fear, feel the fear and do it anyway. That's what Jack Canfield said. So the fear is leading you, overcoming that fear, going into the cave. Yeah. It's going to be another Star Wars scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. And what's fear, by the way? Fear is false evidence appearing real. And I have that in the book. And yeah, that goes to Mark Twain and lots of people yeah. said it. So this yeah, has yeah. been a real pleasure, John. I could talk with you for four hours and I had no idea that you'd worked with Neil yeah. Barackham and Hathaway. And that's so exciting. I, I wish yeah, I had this, been a fly on the wall for yeah, that. This, this has been fantastic, Justin. And maybe you come back because I think we could talk further and get a little deeper <laughs> into this subject because I feel like we've Definitely. scratched the surface. So um, listen, all of Justin's information is below this video, will be below this video. And I would really encourage you to go check out the... Uh, attraction selling sales superpowers the uh, the method 2.0 the trilogy and, and the other book as well you mean if you get value out of these you might as well read them all um so listen <laughs> thanks again justin is there anything else you want to share with our audience about yourself no thanks so much john it's been a real pleasure all right thank you uh thank you much justin thank you for watching listening and i'll see you all again very soon thank you